especially the brain. And this is, is, is a, this is a product that we have been working on for over four years, and it's really effective on a number of people. For our, for our listeners that are just hearing about it, maybe you can just give us the story of how you come, because this is how genius comes together, and we appreciate all the work you do. Maybe you can give us a little bit of that story of how you came up with the Synapsin nasal spray. Well, you know, how it really started was, um, you know, we had a very large clinic in Ohio, and we had a whole spectrum disorder area uh, where we had all, you know, worked uh, for, you know, pre-pregnancy, uh, when children were diagnosed on the spectrum. And I started doing research looking at, well, why is their brain on fire? Because you'd always hear the term, uh, autistic children have brains on fire. Well, it's it really was interesting to me and I so I started looking at it and I went, well wait a second. There's immune cells in the brain that get turned on that are called microglial cells. Well then I thought, well that's that's great for this, you know, autistic and spectrum population and boy to be this is great research. But then I started digging in deeper and what I realized is that these microglial cells uh, that get turned on and then basically just crank out inflammatory compounds that damage your brain over time. It's a feature of nearly every chronic illness in addition to traumatic brain injuries. So people that have post-traumatic stress disorder, people that are diabetic and are starting to get many strokes and they're, and they're losing their memory. Um, people with Parkinson's, um, you know, it's a, it's a central feature. People that are obese, Literally, people that have gained weight, microglial cell activation is now thought to be at the center of why people lose their kind of their fat thermostat and their metabolism's ability to burn fat. So for me, it was this, I stumbled on it because of our spectrum population and then realized that this was a universal target that we had to really attack uh, because I, I really felt like it could help such a broad range of individuals. You know, we probably are talking, the the formulation that we're talking about, the synapse and nasal spray, is a combination of the, the nicotinide riboside and the methyl B12. And this combination, each of them individually, has positive effects to, like you talked about, affect the microglial cells activation and also this brain inflammation. But combination of all of them together can be very, is very synergistic. But there's a real story behind how you really came across the ginsinicide RG3, isn't it? Oh, sure. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the ginsinicide R3, it was, it was interesting. I was teaching at the University of Cincinnati College of Pharmacy and uh, a professor from the University of Beijing uh, School of Medicine was there, and he was talking about this ginsinicide R3, and he showed me a little sample of it and gave it to me. And, you know, like a typical American, I was like, oh, really nice. This is great. <laughs> and I kind of set it off to the side. You know, I mean, obviously, very arrogantly, set it off to the side and it, on it. I, I literally saved it on my shelf, um, but didn't really think about it. And so, and and after he left, and I started doing research on glial cells. Well, what happened was, I started doing research, going, okay, well, what affects glial cells? Like, what has been shown in clinical trials? to turn off glial cells and reduce inflammation because here's the bottom line if you're if you have neuroinflammation going on not just your brain is aging at an accelerated rate your whole body's going to age at an accelerated rate and so it was really important and and lo and behold I'm doing a search and it's uh, I started getting all this literature search on ginsinicide R3 or RG3 and I started scratching my head. I went to my shelf, and I went, holy <laughs> cow, this guy gave this to me two and a half years ago, and I was you know, too smart to really research it. Uh, and then it presented other problems. And as you know, Ray, we, we got together on working on this because there's problems with dissolving it 
And then because it's a very uh, difficult compound to make, it's kind of expensive. So the next piece of it was, well, why don't we put it in a nasal spray and, you know, deliver it intranasally so we can get it right to the brain. And, uh, and I think that was really the, you know, kind of the stroke of genius that was, uh, that was like, yeah, create a nasal spray, do it intranasally. You can get by with a lot less of the dosage and get it directly up into the, you know, the uh, nasal mucosa and, and, and get it to cross uh, into the brain. And uh, it, you know what? It it worked, and we've had a lot of people utilizing it since then. And and, and the the real thought behind the formula, anyway, is you need something to turn the inflammation off, and then you need nutrients to turn on the mitochondria or the powerhouses of the neurons so that they can be repaired. So it's kind of like, uh, hey, I got to tear off the old roof and get rid of the old windows. And I got to shore up the, the foundation, but then I got to put all that stuff on there new. That's what happens to your cells in your brain. A lot of people don't realize your brain can continue to bud new neurons and, and um, prune those neurons into effective neurons as you're aging. A lot, we used to think that, oh, you just lose neurons. It's not the case. When you're, if your brain is healthy and inflammation's under control, you actually can bud new neurons, and restore cognitive capacity. You know, that's it's, it's mainly, many times people misunderstand. They believe that neurons can't be regenerated. So that's the word, the misunderstanding is. But in the proper context, and also with the right nutrients in the, in the conditions, your body does regenerate neurons. So th this is where we came up with other nutrients that could, could be delivered along at the same time. And this is where you you came to me and you said, you know, there's there is another nutrient, this uh, nicotinide riboside, which also upregulates and has influence on mitochondria. Maybe if you can uh, share with our listeners how you felt that this was a, a, another ingredient that would. Vertically with this R3 ginsenicide. Well, I mean, you know, it's 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 one thing to turn off the fire; it's another thing to rebuild your house. And to me, nicotinamide riboside was a new compound coming on the market about seven years ago, um, maybe eight years ago. And I was I was reading it, and I was going, man. That is really an interesting compound because I get a lot of compounds. Um, I was I was at the supply side show yesterday, and I've got a whole new list of compounds I'm interested in that I've seen uh, that are being developed in the marketplace that, you know, are early on. And back then, nicotinamide riboside, even though it's kind of a household name now in the dietary supplement industry, um, it was very new. And what was exciting about it was its ability to trigger – uh, you know, NAD levels to increase, and NAD levels help with uh, carrying energy and stimulating energy production in your in your brain, in your cells of your brain, and right. it it stimulates your mitochondria, which are the powerhouses of your cells. So you got little powerhouses in every one of your cells, and you don't still have one. You got hundreds, to thousands of them. And your challenge as you're aging is to keep those mitochondria healthy and churning out energy so that you can feel vibrant and have vitality. NAD is, uh, is essential to generating mitochondrial potential. And when you take nicotinamide riboside, it helps to stimulate your NAD activity in every cell in your body. And so... So it helps to generate energy, helps to repair tissue. Because remember, when your mitochondria are dying in your cell, your cell's dying, basically. You know, that's, that's why, you know, aging is considered a mitochondrial disorder, right? <laughs> because right, right. if we lose energy, <laughs> man, our cells just don't want to function. And when your cells can't function appropriately, you can't send messages and signaling 
in order to create normal body functions, you know, thinking, energy, you know, blood sugar regulation, immune surveillance, all these things are dictated by energy. And that, that's why the nicotinamide riboside was such a valuable contribution. You're listening to Healthy Choices XM as we're interviewing Dr. Jim Laval, talking about the synapsin nasal spray and the individual ingredients, the, the ginsinicide R3, the nicotinamide riboside, and also the methylcobaldamin as a nasal spray and how this has really been a great discovery of how they synergistically, they work very well together. And as as we talked about, it, Jim, you mentioned the, the ginsinicide R3 and, and its budding of new neurons is a long-term process. And being the other uh, nutrient, nicotinamide riboside, is probably a little bit more shorter acting and it works more spontaneously. So the combination of the two allows patients to be able to feel short term and that's that's important to get people motivated to be in compliance that is that what you saw with your your patients when they when we were able to put both of these together oh i i you know people would report back that within the first couple of days they noticed their mental acuity pick up their focus pick up their ability to sustain uh, in t- more intense thought through the day, you know, that typical executive burnout where, you know, you hit two o'clock and you hit that wall and your brain doesn't really want to work anymore. Many right. people would report back that within a week, they were seeing amazing changes and sometimes in as little as 24 to 48 hours. And, and that's in- what we realize, what you're just talking about, Jim, is that the, the brain is aging uh, constantly, and all the insults that we have on a daily basis with uh, just just environmental insults, poor diet, and then on top of it, all the stress has forces against us that re- sometimes prematurely ages the brain, and some people's genetic makeup causes it to go faster than others, and you know dementia and Alzheimer's and traumatic brain injuries, these are very difficult situations. There's not a lot of solutions out there, even in pharmaceutical, uh, that uh, we have come across. Is Do you agree with that statement, Jim? Oh, yeah. I think for the most part, um, you know, conventional medicine, look, conventional medicine saves millions of lives every day. There's nothing, you know, we're not going to bash conventional medicine, but where I think it's fallen short is on management of chronic conditions, and memory should be thought of as a chronic condition. I think a lot of times people just go, oh, well, I should be forgetting things. I'm 40 now. And I can't tell you how many people come to me that are just burned out by age 40 because the amount of stress, the amount of work, the amount of poor nutrition and the amount of lack of sleep that they've um, extolled on their body, right? It's like I'm punishing my body because I'm not going to eat right. I'm not going to exercise. I'm not going to sleep. I'm going to put myself under too much stress. I'm going to drink too much alcohol. And I'm wondering why when I'm 45 years old, I don't remember where my car keys are. I forget my kid's name. And I, I don't have the recall I used to have. Right. It's 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 one of those things where I hope more people reach out to help recapture their brain health um, before something traumatic like early dementia uh, or or a, you know, know, traumatic brain injury occurs or a PTSD event occurs where it's a necessity that you work on your brain. Let's get more people having a more resilient and healthy brain so that if they do get a trauma, uh, that their brain's more apt to rebound from it. Exactly. You know, Jim, for for our listeners, active clinical practice, and you treat some of the most difficult cases uh, that come across your, your office. And, you know, maybe you can share with us some stories, you know, particularly of patients suffering from PTSD and Many times uh, the people come to you and 
you're the one of last resort. Uh, and we thank you for the work you do, our military and, and some of our uh, other active duty. But maybe you can share some stories of what you have seen and being able to turn around some people's lives. Oh, sure. I mean, I mean, probably one of the most, the, the most traumatic uh, that I've seen so far was actually a traumatic brain injury case where he was literally what was called brain anoxic. Uh, his brain was choked off from, from oxygen for over 17 minutes, uh, was in a uh, extended care facility, basically n- non-responsive uh, for a year and a half. Uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Andy Heyman, uh, he's a medical doc, uh, started this, this because the family reached out and said, look, we'll do anything. We're desperate. And he started giving them, had them using uh, the synapse and nasal spray on this gentleman. And lo and behold, within six weeks, he was taking verbal commands. And now we're several months out, and he's conscious, and he's focused, and he's able to respond uh, he spoke his first words in over two years. Um, that's the most dramatic because that's just not supposed to happen. I mean, that's just like right. the brain's damaged. It's dead. There's no way anything's going to happen positive. But we have video. We videoed it. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible. Um, you know, I just had a, a, a you know a special forces uh, operator come back. Uh, from one of his tours, and when before he left, he had said to me, "You know what? I'm having, you know, I'm not, I'm not thinking as clear, think as I should. Getting ready to go in. You know, do you have any tricks that you know you think you could help me to try to dial in my diet and really get me in tip-top shape before my next, you know, uh, you know, tour?" And I was like, "Well, why don't we try using synapsin?" And I mean, he just reported back, I can't believe how much quicker my reflexes are and how much clearer headed I am and how much better I feel. And when he came back, he was like, I've never felt this good coming back uh, from a tour because, you know, those folks are under a lot of duress. Um, I, I've got, I mean, the, some of the most dramatic uh, instances, Ray, are people just trying to get through their daily life. You know, 35-year-old moms with two kids or three kids working a full-time job, not getting enough sleep, and they, they get to where they can't think clearly because their their brain is literally, you know, what I always call the term, pushing a thought through jello. You're There's so much inflammatory chemistry going on that they cannot create a corrective action to, to hey, feel bright and perky. And they feel bad about, oh, I'm not as good a mom as I could be because my brain's not as sharp, my mood's more flat. And, you know, or you can talk about the executive that's, you know, late in the afternoon you don't want to go into his office and, and ask a question because you know you're going to get your head snapped off and he's not thinking the clearest or she. Um, and, I, I, and literally, I mean, I have um, mothers – working mothers who come into me and say that changed my life. I thought my life was over because so many people get in that spot where they're not thinking clear, their mood's flat. They just don't have energy. They they go, Oh my gosh, I got another half a life to live here. And I got, I got nothing left (laughs) in the tank. And what people don't realize it isn't that your body doesn't have anything left in the tank. It's the energy that your brain tells your body to make that is out of gas. That's what you need to do. It's very rare for people to get adrenally fatigued. You get central fatigue, meaning your brain gets overwhelmed and shuts down because it's trying to preserve you because of the amount of load you put on it. And that, I think, people need to understand that, that you gotta, you got to heal the brain so that your body can follow that path to, to, you know, signaling the way it was meant to signal again and get its circadian rhythms back aligned so that hormones are being released when they're supposed to and you're sleeping when you're supposed to and you're rejuvenating your body each night. Now, that's no short task, but synapsin really helps people to short-circuit their success so that they can get right to it with repairing their brain, feeling more alert, feeling more focused. Now I can start making better decisions about my health and my life. 
things. Exactly. You're listening to Healthy Choices XM as we're broadcasting uh, as a pre-recorded show with Dr. Jim Laval talking about the synapse and nasal spray and all the nutritionals and uh, the components that are put together in this really, truly remarkable product. But, you know, also, Jim, in the second half of our show, I want to go through, it's it's a little bit more than just taking a nasal spray to protect that brain as it's to slow that aging process. It's it's important for us to do some, some shifts in the, the diet as well. And also, we cannot ingest inflammatory substances. And the biggest people for about is your blood sugar levels you know your 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 blood sugar levels uh, are so and the amount of sugar you consume is the first is the biggest culprit uh, the combination of the two make a huge difference to slowing the aging process doesn't it well i mean i think the single biggest factor that relates to how your health is going to pan out in the next in, in your next decade is blood sugar levels I mean, without a doubt, um, regulating your blood sugar is going to spare your brain and the rest of your body. I mean, you know, it's, it's you're kinder to your kidneys, you're kinder to your liver, you're kinder to your blood vessels in your heart when you control insulin. And remember, what a lot of people don't realize is that post-meal spikes in glucose. So your blood sugar goes up because maybe, hey, I'm going to eat a bagel sandwich with a bag of chips and finish it off with a cookie and gulp everything down with a Coke or, a, or, a, or another soft drink that's sugar-laden, your, your blood sugars spike up and trigger a bunch of inflammatory chemicals to be poured out into your body that will trigger not only the brain to become inflamed, but damages all your tissues. So, yeah, blood sugar, it, it is so important. And I got to tell you, Ray, as you well know, I've really been on a kick uh, to, right. you know, exercise, restrict feeding, all that kind of stuff. And, I mean, even for somebody with a family history of diabetes, it's, it's, it, 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 it's a very key mark. We, we touched on blood sugar levels uh, as it contributes to inflammation, especially in the brain, and how what you eat and also what your blood sugars are an hour or two hours after a meal also plays a huge role in, in accelerating the aging process of our brain, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. So, you know, you think of uh, Alzheimer's being diabetes type 3. And, you know, I, but I'm, I'm actually at, at a, a global fasting summit today at the University of Southern California Tech Center of Medicine. I'm going to be speaking there in about an hour or so. And it's interesting that... You know, look, in general, people eat too much too often. They pick the wrong food and they eat too late, and then they don't exercise enough and don't sleep enough. I mean, that's that, that's a big tenet of what the problem is, is that we're, we think that we need to I always tell people, let's start off by fasting between meals. You know, you know right. the average farmer in the early 1900s only had one and a half meals a day and was working a 14-hour manual labor day. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you, we really have to begin to rethink strategies um, to regain brain health. And, you know, one of the things I'm talking about today uh, at the Tech Center um, is about fasting mimic diet and the value of um, triggering brain repair through fasting strategies. So literally, when you you can trigger in a very fast way stem cells and neuronal regeneration by foods. Uh, so when you said earlier, it's not just about using a nasal spray. You're right. I have people do time restricted eating, so I put them on a schedule of eating. I I'll have them do five days of a fasting mimic diet a month when I'm trying to regain their brain competency. Uh, and, and then I use other nutrients, right? Things like phospholipids are really important. Uh, you know, nutrients like PQQ and CoQ10 are really important. Um, but it, you really, you, you can't expect to eat a muffin every day and a couple of cookies uh, and then finish it off with a bowl of pineapple, meaning that you're, you're pumping a bunch of sugar into you 
and think that your brain is going to be healthy. It's, it's going to create right. a problem down the road. You know, and it's, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. Also, people believe that their cholesterol levels or whatever, or they can check their blood pressure levels. And it doesn't really matter what they eat because that's what they've been told. And at the same time, we have patients that also believe, well, I just ran two miles today, so I can pretty much eat whatever I want. And I know you do a lot of work with athletes, and you realize it's um, it's a three-legged stool. You have to do all of the above. Well, I mean, athletes, I'll tell you, many times when I look at athletes' labs, it, the only thing that's different between the athlete and someone who's obese um, is that one's heavy and one isn't. The athlete suffers from very similar metabolic distortions uh, as people that are overweight. So it's a, it's a real, um, I think, a real problem because, you know, athletes do think that, oh, I can eat whatever I want. And the reality is it's not what you do when you're training or when you're in the game. It's the other 22 hours a day that help you to recover efficiently and make you survive the sport that you're in, whether you're an amateur and you're a triathlete or you're trying, you're attempting to, you know, maybe be a professional athlete, you know, whether it's amateur or professional. So yeah, it's a problem um, no matter what. And I mean, athletes that think that I can eat whatever I want and I can exercise, they're just missing the boat on, you know, really maximizing the benefit of that exercise. You know, we probably supposedly exercise more than any other country in the world. We spend more money on health care than any other country in the world by far. But recently at a lecture, you come up with a statistic of the overall life expectancy of the United States versus other countries. There's a big gap, isn't it? Well, I mean, for the amount of money we spend on health, we're ranked, I believe, 74th in quality of life. I mean, our ranking on quality of life was horrible. Uh, and, 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 and yet our spend is at the top of the heap. So it's pretty alarming that, that we're ranked as low as we are with all the spend that we have and all the exercising we are doing and all the Lululemon uh, studios that are out there selling (laughs) exercise garments to people, we're still fat. And, and, you know, and and there's more to it than just, you know, how much you're eating and how much you move, although that is important. I mean, I, I, I used to not teach counting calories. What I teach now is change the quality of your food and count your calories. You know, both of those things are important in terms of the uh, of how someone's going to get a a successful outcome on managing their weight. So that so that's the you know it, it it's really interesting that that you know yeah you got to look at quality you got to look at quantity and then you got to look at things like stress and you know environmental burden as to what may be affecting that person's metabolism, right? Their hormones. I mean, you've seen this over and over again, Ray. I mean, women that are estrogen dominant, uh, they just flat out have more issues around weight gain than women who have a better balance to their hormones. So all of those things kind of play a role. And remember, as soon as you're beginning to gain weight, you're overweight and you're and, and or categorized as obese, and you're insulin resistant or considered a type two diabetic, what will happen is um, by default, you're, you'll start to trigger inflammation in your body that will go from your brain to your toes. It's that simple. That's, that is simple. You know, if you're, if you're just tuning in, this is Healthy Choices X and improve your brain health. And it seems like you, you may be listening and say, well, how does the diet and how does exercise and overall quality of health, how does this all relate? I think it's really important for our listeners to realize that if you're tired and it starts with your brain and you really can't focus, you the thought of making decisions or making changes to your life, overall health has to start there. And all the other steps that we just went through in our show today gives people a roadmap 
of how they can make what seems to be a very torturous, difficult path to make it easier for them. So I think it starts with the, uh, in the brain. This is what we, we started out with. The, uh, do you get started that they can get control of their life? And I think that's where, where it starts. And then you can be able to talk to them. I know that you have in your clinical practice, sometimes you have to be able to communicate with them. And if they can, can't understand what you're saying, then everything's, you know, unfortunately, all your time and energy is lost, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, look, it doesn't matter how smart we think we are. We have to be able to communicate to people and make them change their lives. One of the things I start with is just getting people to de-stress. I mean, hey, breathe deeper, use the box breath technique, you know, four breaths in, hold a four count, four breaths out, hold a four count, or use an app to teach you how to breathe. Or if you have an Apple Watch, just hit the breathe. Uh, And because what people don't realize is that breathing changes your nervous system. So when you breathe deep, your nervous system goes into its calming mode, and that calming mode uh, helps your your nervous system to repair. And I think we're, we're desperately missing that, and it's been published all over medicine about loss of vagal tone leading to heart disease and dementia and other chronic illnesses. And, you know, breathe, try to get out there and get some steps going. If 10,000 steps is too much, and I'll tell you what, sometimes 10,000 steps seems like it's, you know, never going to get those in. Um, go for 5,000, you know, um, try to make a commitment to get to bed a little earlier, try, try to change, you know, and I know there's no broccoli shops on your driving home. There's donut shops and liquor stores, you know, that's what's on the way home for most people. Right. And so right. you're going to have to make smarter choices. No, don't, don't, so what I'm saying is get the broccoli muffin. Now you may have to drive <laughs> around quite a bit to get that. But you got to find you got you got to find joy in eating healthier foods and explore them, uh, and and that's going to really help if if you are wanting to try to help your brain is correct your food, eat foods that don't spike your insulin so much, use something like synapse and nasal spray to repair your brain, really help you to feel sharper, feel more crisp, alter those those glial cells. Um, turn them off and allow your brain to repair itself because that's really what you're doing. You're allowing your body to repair itself. That's the ideal way to, to utilize natural therapies. And, and that's what's so great about these natural medicines, which has been the foundation of healing since the beginning of time. And then I think these lifestyle changes that you're making, you'll see the benefit of these milestones that you get to. You'll be able to hit the 10,000 steps a day and you get that joy of that accomplishment. You're feeling